Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with Brandon Allinger. Hello, sir. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, sir. From Prop Store, he always brings amazing treats to the cave. And well, I'm not sure this needs any introduction. This is Maximus's helmet from Gladiator. And this is one of the screen used helmets. Yeah, this is an original and this is a big one for me. I love Gladiator. When I saw that film, I just thought it was amazing. Start one of my all time favorites. Still amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many Oscars did it win? It's just Gladiator is a masterpiece. And this totally recognizable custom made helmet from the big arena fight. You know, it's distinct to Maximus's character. He's the only one who wears this helmet in the film. It's beautiful. It's the one he takes off when he reveals himself to Commodus. Right, which is a great moment. Love that moment in the film. Um, I have met one of these helmets in the past. Uh, the one I met uh, was a, had a foam front face because yes. I think it was for the horseback riding. Yes, I know the one you're speaking oh, of. Okay. That's the only one I've ever seen before this one showed up more recently. Um, that's a great helmet also. I think that one, the, the face is rubber, as you say, and because it's rubber, there's some cracks in it that, 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 uh, that you can see on film as well. So it's, it's very distinct. This one is a very comparable piece where the back helmet is fiberglass, mm -hmm. just like that one is. The, the front face plate on this one is rigid and, and they yeah. are interchangeable. You can see it's just held on with the pins here, right? Right, and I can also see it's got this really nice, very carefully applied leather liner on the interior. So yes. it was meant yeah. to be seen up close. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, and maybe for that shot you're talking about where he takes it off and he tucks mm -hmm. it under his arm, maybe they thought you'd see the interior. But yeah, the, the, the helmet itself is lined with leather inside as well. Oh, the whole helmet, look at that. Yeah. Wow, I didn't even notice the backside's all, wow. And it looks like there's like a, a ring of glue in there. It looks like maybe there's an additional liner cup that was stuck in top of that, like a mm. head pad at some point as well. Really? So yeah, it's got, it's got a bit of a history to it. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can take it off. Should we take it off? Well, yeah, it? if you want, yeah. We're wearing my gloves. Yeah, right. it's just it's just on the stand here. I think it'll just sort of roll off for us. Yeah. So if you go in oh, there, oh wow! See see the glue yeah, remnants. Yeah, there must have been like... maybe some foam padding in there mm -hmm. to keep it stable. Mm -hmm. And you can also see the fiberglass construction in there, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah, that it's the chopped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is such a lovely piece. Again, one of my all-time favorite films. And I get really excited when stuff like this shows up because I'll use your photo reference from the catalog to go find what I consider to be the best replica. Yeah. Because there's an endless number of replicas in this made out of plastic, rubber, steel, what have you. But like, it's really hard to find one that's, that's dead, dead on. on. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. And you know, we take a lot of pride in the photography. We want people to see these things and appreciate them. Even if you're not bidding in the auction, we are fans ourselves. We like sharing with other fans. We know people want to see these. And you know, for me, that's one of the most fun parts of the job and of handling this material is getting to see all the little angles and details that you couldn't see yeah. and appreciate on screen, you know? And this is one where the paint job holds up from mm. a centimeter away. It is, it, it looks every bit like a piece of metallic, yeah. beat up hardware. Uh, it's been made for real close scrutiny of the camera. There's these like beautiful weathering around the lines of topography. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, I love the dark infill and the, the various dents. Yeah, the real big dents. Age it, yeah. And, and this, there's a story with this as well where you can see the tip of the crest here. Oh yeah, it's Mohawk. missing some paint. Yeah, it's actually damaged. And so it looks like it's probably been dropped at some point. That's chipped away. And then the, the metallic paint finish is chipped back as well. And uh, you know th that we were told occurred on set and is the reason this one was taken out of circulation. Obviously they always have a few. Yeah. This is one of a few that they had for the film, was, um, but that is on set damage. Were these built by Simon Atherton's people? I don't think so. Simon oh, okay. definitely did all the weapons. Right, right, and right. So That's what he usually does for Ridley. Swords and even like that crazy crossbow, the sort of four-way crossbow oh, yeah. in the movie. <laughs> That's definitely a Simon Atherton thing. I think this was the costume team and the costume props team. Uh, I know the costume designer in the film is, is Janty Yates. He was Janty, okay. Who does all Ridley I love stuff, her. She's right? She's my hero. Yeah, um, and brilliant costume design. I mean, ev every one of Russell Crowe's costumes is a masterpiece, and Commodus, Joaquin Phoenix, I mean, all the costumes are just fantastic. Um, Russell famously has a lot of pieces from his movies. Um, I'm curious if he has one of these helmets. Hey, send him a text. I will right have ask him at some point. Find out. It is a great question, because, uh, yeah. We uh, actually, I don't know if I've told you the story, we had a Gladiator piece in a prior auction we had it on display in London. Someone took a picture of it, posted it online, and tagged Russell Crowe on Twitter. And he came back and said, that's not real. I have the real one. And then we responded to him and said, look, we're sure you have a real one, but this is a real one also. And it screen matches this one particular shot. 
And then he looked, we posted a photo comparison, he looked at it and he came back and apologized. And he said, apologies for casting aspersions, mate. I remember exactly what he said because I was so excited to read it. He said, I guess this is one of the ones that would have been used momentarily while we were changing out the main one. So again, there's always multiples. Yeah. We had one, I'm sure Russell Crowe has one. Maybe he has one of these, you gotta find out. I do, I do. I mean, yeah, for any single prop on a film, the production team is always gonna make like at least six, mm. I mean, a whole bunch of them. So you could lose one, you could drop one, you could misplace one, and they'd still have one ready to shoot. Yeah, yeah, and and it would be interesting to find out how many of these there were because prior to this one showing up, the one that you're speaking of that's in another private collection was the only one that we had ever seen. Mm. And you know maybe Russell Crowe has one. I don't think I've seen pictures of it in his museum, but it doesn't mean he doesn't have it. Um, and then maybe there could be one or two others tucked away in studio archives. But as far as private hands right now, there are two. And wow. I think um, you know this is obviously the the only one that's obtainable in our auction. It is um, surprisingly light, which of course you really have to do for actors because they got to wear these things for hours on end. Yeah. But it is surprisingly light. It maybe weighs like I don't know, 12, 14 ounces. It's right. Yeah, I guess, I guess they would be deliberately making it as thin of a casting as they possibly could, the, make it as comfortable as possible. You know, lining this with leather like this is non-trivial. Um, someone clearly wet the leather to get it to fit that deep topography of the nose down here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just impressed with the work. Uh, that is a magnificent piece, both inside and out, which is rare, right? Like that the whole inside also kind of sells. Yeah, and if you, it's like if you think of pieces from Gladiator, like, where does your mind go? Oh, yeah. I mean, this has got to be one of the this, tops, right? One of the swords. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. armor. Todd's Costumes made a beautiful set of armor that I've had. Um, um, which, the black one? or The black one with the horse. The, okay. Yeah, the one from this scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't bring it because I was sure you weren't going to let me put this on. Well, so I thought, why wear, why wear a costume if I can't put on the Right now it belongs to the consigner, <laughs> so we shouldn't wear it. But we do, we do actually have one of the body armors in the auction as well. Actually, there's a couple. There's a prototype gold body armor, mm -hmm. and then there's a, a full finished production uh, black armor with the shoulder, the, the oh, shoulder, yeah, shoulder the pauldron details as well. With his two horses? That yeah, he, oh, yeah. wow. And I'm sure you're aware, but the, you know, the, he's constantly adding characters to it through the film. So it's sort of like it starts with a couple, and then he adds a couple more, and then in the end fight, there's even more characters on I it. I did not know uh, that. Oh, yeah, watch the movie. It's, there's different configurations, and he's, he's constantly adding decorations to it. I'm really surprised to be told a gladiator fact I didn't know. I thought I was obsessed with this movie, but clearly I have work to do. <laughs> Brandon, this is such a beautiful piece. Um, what an amazing thing. Yeah, like I say, I'm a huge Gladiator fan myself, so for me, this was a really exciting one when it comes in the door, and um, yeah, we're happy to have it and be mm. offering it in the auction. Yeah, this is uh, it's absolutely one of my, it's among those movies that I just watch like once a year just because, just right. to kind of refill my yeah. tanks. It's sort of infinitely rewatchable. A hundred percent. And maybe they're doing a sequel? We're talking about a sequel? I, you know, I heard tell of that yeah. recently. It doesn't I, feel like a movie that needs a sequel, but <laughs> I'm not I, saying I won't be there on no, opening day. No, I will but totally I be there. Yeah, yeah, I wonder too. Yeah. Ah, oh, what a great piece. Thank you for bringing it here in the cave. I feel lucky just to spend some time around it. Hey, it's always fun sharing the stuff with people who care.